Real quick, before we get into the show, I wanted to share a new service called Getita that Ken and I have been using that has made us over $10,000 in Amazon reimbursements. The service requires no monthly subscription, and Getita collects a small percentage of the money they recover for you. It takes less than five minutes to set up and works on all Amazon marketplaces. Go to getita.com, G-E-T-I-D-A, and enter promo code FTM400. That's FTM for firing the man, 400, to get your first $400 in reimbursements commission free. How much money does Amazon owe you? You want to buy this product? Yes, now you can go to another listing, similar product, or you can just buy add to cart, right? You can just do the add to cart, right? So if you see the strike through price, hey, it's better now. It's better. Let's buy. Like people think coupon codes will have a good impact in their conversion rates, but actually only the consumers who already decided to buy and they are really careful about the listing, they check the coupon code and then they click the add to cart button, but it's not helping the conversion. It's just giving them an additional 5% discount. Welcome everyone to the Firing the Man podcast, a show for anyone who wants to be their own boss. If you sit in a cubicle every day and know you are capable of more, then join us. This show will help you build a business and grow your passive income streams in just a few short hours per day. And now your hosts, serial entrepreneurs, David Schomer and Ken Wilson. Welcome everyone to the Firing the Man podcast. On today's episode, we are joined by Hi Mag the co-founder and CEO of Ava.Guru. Ava provides an AI-powered repricing, restocking, and reimbursement platform for Amazon sellers. Prior to co-founding Ava, Hai was involved in several entrepreneurial ventures in the e-commerce space, including a tech investor for Einstein Ventures, an advisor for Algopix, as well as spending 15 years in the consulting space for companies like Oracle, IBM, and Accenture. We are very excited to have Hi on the show. I will also add that Ken and I have been using this software for about a month now. And there, if, if there is such a thing as a love story between a business owner and a software, I think we may have found our Cinderella. Welcome to the Hi. The, welcome to the show, Hi. Hey, thank you for having me, David and Ken. So thank you. Absolutely. So c- to start things off, can you talk about, tell us a little bit about yourself and your path that led you to founding Ava.guru. Absolutely. So you already told about myself, but if I, you know, just go back like four years ago, I was the vice president of Oracle running more than a billion dollar of sales business. And at the time I was thinking, Hey, it's, it's the right time with retail, you know, experience. And with my corporate experience, I wanted to do something new and from scratch. I met with my co-founder at the time, Barry, and he was running an Amazon business for like seven, eight years. And we come together, we try to find out like what's what's missing or how we can add value to the brands on Amazon. And that's where, you know, we started with Eva. And the, the kind of initial idea was there are these three domains in the Amazon space that we kind of simplified it to inventory management, advertising management, and pricing and promotion management. And when somebody just focuses on one, the others are also correlated. Like all these decisions are correlated and focusing on one doesn't solve the the kind of the problem, which is always the maximizing the profits. And that's how we started. Like how can we create platform which can create decisions based on both inventory advertising and pricing at the same time. Awesome. So it's, it sounds like the three core focus, there's three core focuses and they almost all feed off of each other to make intelligent decisions, correct? Absolutely. So I'm also a computer engineer like my co-founder and some of our company is like full of computer engineers and AI guys and everybody which sometimes it's good, sometimes not that good, like to understand the business. But, you know, we always look at the data, right? Like we have billions of data points now on EVA, like because, you know, we are running EVA in the U.S. marketplace for 
thousands of sellers, but also in UK, EU, Middle East, you know, Asia pack. So with all these millions, billions of that data points, we are just seeing that correlation of inventory, advertising, and pricing, and how these are impacting each other. Awesome. So, so hi, why is price testing important for private label brands, especially now nowadays? Yeah. I mean, when you said nowadays, that's also a very interesting time we are in because probably we hit the, the record inflation rates in the U.S., you know, like a history. And uh, I mean, inflation is kind of an interesting thing because I've been, I, I, I lived in almost 40, 45 countries in my life so far. And, and I was managing like Africa where there are countries with thousand percent inflation or hundred percent. And, and, and you cannot imagine like, like at some point people don't get it anymore. Like what's the right price for something. Right. And, and even yesterday, I was checking like based on like one of the focus areas we have is supplements. And I was checking like the supplement, the, the impact of inflation on supplement, supplements. And that was between 5 to 20% compared to last year. So how come any consumer even knows like what's the right price? Like they don't know. And on the other side, when for the Amazon sellers, it was already difficult. Why? Because container prices are dynamic, right? I mean, starting from even that point, right? During the last year, you know, the fluctuations and now it's going down. And the cost of the, 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 the manufacturing costs are changing almost every. And Amazon FBA costs are changing so much because like we need to have like controls with FBA. And believe me, four years ago when we started, we thought if we can update the FBA fees every three months, we would be, it would be enough, you know, because the changes should happen like every six months or so. I can tell you now we are updating FBA fees every day on EVA because it's changing. Like in every single category, in Amazon is like increasing the fees, unfortunately not decreasing. So what I'm saying is almost every single cost parameter and the consumer expectations, everything is like volatile, everything is dynamic. So there is absolutely no no reason left like to keep the price even for a month in a static way on Amazon. I'm even having this conversation with some of the brands which are doing subscribe and save. And I proved the point that 95% of the even subscribers do not expect the same price. You know, after a month, they know that the things are changing every day. So the price testing becomes like not just to test it for a few percent better profit or a, maybe a few percent better revenue, but it becomes like a mandatory piece, like the prices need to change and adapt itself to the environment, the changing costs, as well as inflation and changing demands. Absolutely. And, and you know, as a, as a business owner, there are so many things that are out of our control, but the one thing that is in our control is the price that we set. And this was something, you know, if you look at an Amazon platform, you can split test main images, you can split test bullet points and titles, but this price I think is more important than all of those. And so we had just prior to signing up with Ava, we had done it manually in a spreadsheet where we change our price into a 30 day look back, which you're really not getting real time results. There used to be a, a product called Profit Peak, which is since shut down. We tried out Cash Cow Pro, which we didn't really like. And, and this is the first price testing software that we've used that we're like, oh, this is real time data and it, it's real time. So, like that 30 day look back, we could only do 12 price changes a year to even decide. And sometimes you'd change your price and you'd wait 30 days and it was the wrong move. And it was like, well, darn, I've been doing this for 30 days. And so really like that, that feature of it. So, you know, on the website, it, it talks about maximizing profit on autopilot. Can you discuss kind of the mechanics behind the, the price testing software and what exactly it's doing to identify that, that perfect price that optimizes profit? No, great question. And I wouldn't even call it like a, 
a price testing software, but what it does is it's an AI-powered engine which finds the next best price to maximize the profits without sacrificing the velocity. Okay, so that's kind of the, 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 the main principle. Now, let's, let's look at the velocity first because on an, under a normal condition, the velocity can be important, but with a, with a maybe lower velocity, you can get a higher profit. But in the Amazon, if you are lowering the velocity for any reason, that will have consequences. Like that will have indirect effects. Like, you know, if you think about the velocity, for example, if we are talking, thinking about a pure pricing scenario, the conversion rate, right? Like that will go down as you are increasing the price. Or in the organic sales, obviously, again, the same thing, like less people will buy your product as the price is going up. So for, and the, the other thing is, if the velocity reduces your organic rank and your keyword rankings or your best sell, sales ranking will go down too. So which means that whatever we do, the one of the most important thing is like to keep the velocity the same or to increase the velocity by changing the price. That's That's very important. So it's not like, theoretically maximizing the profit for the sake of the, like, without ignoring the velocity component. So as long as the velocity is same or more, then what we kind of find by using AI is what is the best price point for tomorrow? And based on our analysis, you know, it's not like increasing the price by a significant amount for tomorrow, like 5, 10, 15%. But there is a range that we test the price like 1%, 2% more or or higher. And based on that, the AI engine basically learns more if that was the right decision or not. And the next day, it will correct the decision and try to give a better decision based on the previous day. Now, while doing this, we have 24 months of data and especially the data from Yesterday, the data from like last week, the same day, last month, last quarter, last year, the same day or same month, there's like a different weights of all different types of prices happen in the back in the history of that product as well. So all of them help to find the best price point for tomorrow without sacrificing conversion rate, without sacrificing the velocity. So that's what we are trying to do. Okay, excellent. And so just for the audience to, you know, a- Ava has got, it's a it's an entire suite of software. And so, you know, David and I in our portfolio company, we're testing out the, you know, the pricing profit module of, of this software. And that's what we're really doing a deep dive here today. We're testing out other modules. And and before the show, I talked to Hi and I said, well, we'll have you back on later and, and, and discuss more about other modules. But today we're really focusing on, the, the pricing, the repricing feature and profitability. And so hi, on that feature, as you know, if someone would say, hey, I'm, you know, I don't have any price testing right now. I don't know, you know, and so they want to, they want to try that when they install it. Most of, I've, most of the listeners are private label. And so what are some of the options and features with the, in the, in the price testing that you would recommend them testing? Wow. That's a great question. So first of all, as you already know, it's really easy to set it up and start testing it because what we always say is like the first thing that you need to know as a seller is what is your real real profit? What's the accurate profit? And, and at the monthly level, daily level, as well as at the product level. So that's the first thing the setup needs to be done, obviously by entering the cost information, the system will automatically calculate all the FBA fees, everything, and come up with a minimum price and the maximum price suggestion based on the cost as well as the margin or ROI expectation. So once like we define the 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 interval, the minimum and the maximum price interval, then the the rest is done by the system. So the rest means that demand-based pricing. But demand-based pricing is the default option, right? So it basically looks at the demands, trends, and finds the 
next next day best price uh, to maximize the profit. But there are other things. For example, a second one is the inventory based pricing. Again, it kicks automatically, but especially in Q4 and for seasonal items, that can be very interesting because as the inventory level goes below a certain threshold that the seller defines, the prices will automatically start to increase, which means that because I was talking about the importance of velocity for Amazon to keep the ranking at the same level, but when the inventory is low, it doesn't make sense now to keep the velocity the same, then the system will start increasing the price to delay the stock out. Now, it has also another advantage during the Q4. We have seen a lot of our customers like making an additional 20 to 30% profit because, I mean, they cannot replenish anyway. So if it's the case, why not to make more money? What's the point of like being out of stock after five days? be out of stock in 20 days and make sure that like you make more money. Now, sometimes I'm pretty sure like you mentioned that you are doing it on an Excel sheet or manually. I know that some sellers will think, hey, I can increase the price by 30%. But then my question, how do you know that you're going to sell all the items? There is also a risk, right? But the system is doing it every day, gradually making sure, checking, you know, what's the number of inventory days in the system versus how many units should be sold and what should be the price. So that's the inventory-based pricing. That will be also interesting. Uh, By the way, a lot of customers use BSR and tacos-based rules. I don't know if you ever checked that. It's a little bit more advanced stuff, but you can also check like, the next week, the previous week's tacos versus the the last week's tacos. And based on that, you know, you define the rules or same thing for the BSR. These are more like a manual rules that can be defined. And also for the launch, we have something called target velocity based pricing because when you are launching a new product, you have no idea about like the, there is no past the data. So the system doesn't know what should be the right price, right? Now, what you can do is like, you can define the cost and the minimum margin. And based on that, you can also define a target velocity-based price, which means, for example, if I sell five units, increase the price by 2%. So you can define your own rule of like how pricing should look like based on the number of units that you sell. So that's also a possibility, which is a pure rule rather than a kind of an AI approach, which might work better for the first three or six months of the product launch, for example. Okay. One of the features that I have really liked and I'm curious to ask you is you can set price rounding. So for instance, if you want your price to end in 99 cents, you can do that. And when I was setting it up, I think I did 50 ASINs with price rounding at 99 cents. I did 50 ASINs with price rounding at 97 cents, kind of the Costco approach. I did 50 ASINs at 49, and then I did 50 without anything. Just they will. And so you were mentioning the movement of price just by a small amount, that two to 3%. When you have price rounding, like say on a product that's $9.99 and you go to 10.99, are you would you be better off turning that price rounding off on your lower priced items? Well, that's, again, I think it's a very good question because when we think that there is a bit of a, we also called it like psychological pricing. Now, the the psychological effect is on two sides. There is a seller side, (laughs) there is a consumer side. Now, most of the the sellers think like, hey, this is for the consumer. Probably they will like it if it is ending with 99. And there are studies around that, that it makes sense, you know, to have it 1099 rather than 11. Now, there are like, I mean, I, I read a lot about that. So, but I cannot tell you if 10.97 is, for example, better than 10.99. Now, we know that Procter & Gamble, Unilever, or you mentioned Costco. 
I mean, they're all trying that. Like I've seen also, I mean, I read all the articles around 47, the power of seven, the power of eight, nine. Is it 49 or 99? So there is all this, but there is no, I can tell you that it's very hard to, to prove the point that like one works better than the other. Now we, it goes back to the seller psychology as well. And uh, many sellers, like I, I see one seller is always doing eight. Like it's always eight. He loves that. Like all my products <laughs> ends with eight. It's fine. You know, that's the that's psychology of the seller. Now, very good point that you mentioned. If you have a product, which is, let's say the, 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 the price is 2.4, like 2.43 cents. And it's kind of rounded between like either 199 or 299. Obviously, then we are talking about a big difference in the price. My thinking is like less than $10, the price rounding can have a significant impact, right? It can round the price and that can be, you know, maybe 10, 15, 20% increase. We can also say that, well, does it really matter? Like if somebody purchases 2.2.46 versus 2.99, would they be discouraged because there is a 40 cents difference? That's another question, right? Like because it becomes less relevant, like that people don't like don't look at that maybe it's 40, 40 cents less or more. I think that it makes more sense above ten dollars products, like to, to make this work. But even if you do it below 10, still the impact is really kind of ignorable, I think. Got it. Got it. Okay. Sorry to interrupt the episode. You may have heard Ken and I talking recently about a new tool that we're using for Amazon refunds. Now, I have used other refund tools like this. However, I can tell you in the first seven days, they scrubbed the back end of my Amazon account going back 18 months and found $5,000 of refunds. And the nice thing about this is it's my money. Amazon made a mistake and they are just auditing my account. The other thing I really like about this tool is there is no monthly fee. They only charge a commission if they are successful in getting you your money. Go to getida.com, G-E-T-I-D-A, and enter promo code FTM for firing the man, FTM400. This is an awesome tool. Can't say enough good things about it. Now, back to the episode. Well, that, sound, that sounds good. And, and to our listeners, there is, I believe, a 15-day free trial. You got to check this out. It's uh, I, as a recovering CPA, have fallen in love with it and am excited to continue to use it and, and you know, hit, give an answer to when we split tested it, here was our results and, and we'll be sharing that in, in the months ahead. So, you know, I had mentioned spreadsheet models. That, that's how we were kind of previously doing this. And in the past, we had had a tough time because as the price increases, your conversion rate generally will go down making your PPC more expensive. The opposite is true as well. As the price decreases, your conversion rate goes up, making PPC cheaper. So in these two examples, you kind of have this canceling out effect where you have your independent variable price, then you have two dependent variables, which is PPC cost and conversion rate moving in opposite direction. And so how does Ava solve for that? So the... I mean, definitely, as you mentioned, like uh, there is this like a negative correlation between the two parameters. And uh, one of the things that I mentioned was EWA is made for keeping the velocity the same or more. And the uh, conversion rate is, is also something that we'll look at. But obviously, there is another factor there. There is organic sales as well, besides the advertising sales. So we look at the conversion rate. But the, heavy, the, the, the most important parameter for us is the velocity. So if we theoretically assume like the same number of impressions exist and we change the price, and if the conversion rate is the same, that's exactly the, the interval that we are changing the price. So meaning that as long as the demand is there, the price will go up anyway. And if the demand somehow goes down or stays the stable, it doesn't make sense to increase the price anymore. So that's exactly the system decides in the next 24 hours based on all the data coming during the day. So that's how like we are 
And that's why a lot of like data, like a Vera, how should I say, like or if the data is only based on or the decisions are only based on the historical results, that's where there will be a problem with the next decision because it may create a, a reduction on the on the conversion rate. But what we are looking at is the real-time data as well. I mean, definitely, we look at the historical data with AI, but also there is the impact of the real-time situation because Amazon decisions that like next couple of hours, next day, are also more important than what happened like last year. So that's kind of like uh, what we are looking at it as a kind of a design principle to make sure that if the conversion rate is going down, hey, do not increase the price anymore. That makes no sense, you know, from our side. There is another thing, which is a feature, but it's a killer feature. And we just deployed, by the way, a new version of that, which I'm calling it the dynamic discounting. We are still working on it, like, but what is available today, I think that has a, also a a positive impact on the conversion rate. We have seen 10 to 15% conversion because you can implement a sale price on on Amazon, but by using EVA, the strike-through price. For example, you can say between Monday, so every Monday between 5 p.m. to 9 p.m., I want a 10% discounted strike-through price and between... 1 p.m. to 5 p.m., 5% discounted price. So now you can define different discounts during the day on EVA. It's a killer. I tell you, please think it, try that because it was not available like three, four weeks ago in in this way. Right now, it's a kind of a recurrent discount. So you can define it like every Monday, rush hour, 10% 10% discount strike through price because when you have a strike through price we see the conversion rate increasing by 10 15% can be really significant to use that strike through even if you make 3% discount still people look at it hey it's better <laughs> it's better than what yes. doesn't matter you know like <laughs> because now we are talking about this one second that the brain decides right like Somebody, the human brain, you are on that listing. You want to buy this product. Yes, now you can go to another listing, similar product, or you can just buy add to cart, right? You can just do the add to cart, right? So if you see the strike through price, hey, it's better now. It's better. Let's buy. So uh, we see that all the time. You know, that, that's also the, the data tells us that. So I also recommend to use that as well as, a, as another impact to increase the conversion rates. That's interesting. And yeah, definitely going to check that out and, and, and do a little bit more research on that one. But it sounds like that that's kind of like the crossroads of data science meets psychology, because how you're right, like when people see a sale price, they're like, oh, I, even if they don't want to buy it or they don't need it, they say like, oh, that's a really good deal right now. I'm just going to get it because it's a good deal. And so I, I really like that. Can I, can I give you another example? Because that's so, sure. so interesting as well. And I think users will like, uh, the, the listeners will like it. When we see an FBA listing, an FBM listing, for example, on the same, for the same ASIN, there is an FBA SQ and FBM SQ, right? And also on EVA, you can define simultaneous pricing. For example, you can say by using parent pricing, or there is another way too, but you can easily say, hey, I want my FBM to be 5% higher than FBA, which is what we recommend, right? Like we, we always recommend the FBM price to be higher, but also we recommend both FBM and FBA versions to coexist at the same time. You know what happens now? What we realize is if you have FBM and FBA, the, the consumer goes into the listing, they see that somebody else is selling the same product, but it's 5% higher price. Actually, that somebody is you, but nobody <laughs> nobody checks, right? Like, who is that guy? Like, it's like, hey, I should buy. This guy is good. Like, I mean, the other guy is selling for 10%, 5% higher. We just see that, like, based on the data, it shows, it gives us a much better conversion rate. Let's say 5% better. It's actually around 5 to 6%. But, you know, every little thing increases that, right? Like, you know, this is very easy to set it up. 
And also it completely avoids you to be out of stock, right? Because you have an FBM listing as long as you can fulfill it. But nobody's buying your FBM listing because it's, 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 it's more expensive. Yeah. But I like it gives it. the I... idea, right? That, you know, just buy now because somebody else is hiring already, sorry, selling already for a, a, a more, a bigger, you know, better price. So I love that. I, I, it seems like if you get into the mind of a shopper, one thing they may do is check price to see if they're getting a good deal. Kind of maybe I'm going to check another listing. But when they can go in and see that FBM listing, they kind of check that box of, okay, I've done my due diligence more comfortable with this purchase by now. And so I like that. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, I, I would like to give you another one. That's that's something it will in, be also very interesting is coupon codes. It doesn't, you know that 80% of the people do not check that at all. <laughs> like that's also interesting, right? Like people think coupon codes will have a good impact in their conversion rates, but actually only the consumers who already decided to buy and they are really careful about the listing, they check the coupon code and then they click the add to cart button, but it's not helping the conversion. It's just giving them an additional 5% discount. <laughs> so that's yeah. also what we found. That's yeah, interesting. We, 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 so to kind of, we have a program in place to avoid long-term storage fees. So as we're approaching like that nine month mark, we had previously been using coupons. And what we found was every time they're clipped, you're charged. Whether they're used or not, doesn't matter. They're, when they're clipped, you get charged. And so we have actually, we still have that program in place, but we are also using AVA to like significantly decrease the price. And so we're going to test those two against each other. But you're right. Yeah, I never look for coupon codes until I've made up my mind that I'm buying. And so I like that. I'm, I'm loving this. Do you have any more? Any more of these? Well, you mentioned <laughs> that what I, I mean, there is a there is a way of like liquidating the stock on that on on EY as well. So you can easily say, hey, I want to sell five units a day. And if I'm not selling five, reduce the price by three percent. So it's kind of the the default is the AI version, right? The demand base, inventory base, it's all working automatically, but then you can define your own rules, like either to increase the price during the launch, but also you can define the liquidation or maybe you are overstocked and you want to sell more and you can also define that rules too. So that all kind of helps. For example, in the future, in the future, what we want is besides dynamic pricing, by the way, that's a secret thing, but anyway, nobody's listening to us. <laughs> we want to build the dynamic discounting you know, it's a complete like dynamic discount, like keep the price the same, but just play with the discount all the time, for example, you know, that might yeah. be also a very interesting, that's, that's what we are progressing with that thing module, the, the strike through pricing, because it's very, very successful so far, wherever we, you know, implemented it with our customers. Yeah. And not to tell you how to run your business, but if you could somehow work in avoiding long-term storage fees into that, that would be a, a dream come true because- we have a lot of instances where we would be better off taking our inventory and lighting it on fire than right. than have getting hit with long term storage fees. And they're sneaky. They're sneaky. They sneak up on you, and all of a sudden your payout is five thousand dollars less, and you're like, "What the hell happened this month?" So yeah. Anyway, so go ahead, Ken. Yeah, yeah. No, that that's a really good point that David made, and and I think Amazon just last month they announced they they implemented a new like nine month storage fee, and so it used to be like it would go up at like six months, a little bit or something. And then, and then it would wait till like 12 months and then it would go way up. Now they put it at nine months just to get more revenue. And so, yeah, we, we've got program like internal programs that we're trying to lick, you know, trying to get rid of inventory as it, as it ages, but yeah, getting this built into there is, would be, would be really helpful. I really like the, you know, the strike through pricing. I, I think that like, like what you just mentioned, hi, I know your, your, your team's probably testing these now, but like building that into the, 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 you know, the strike through pricing and then finding out what that is to increase that conversion rate and then cooking that for a while and then, and then kind of tweak in that, like, I'm excited to, to get in and in, in, uh, mess around with that. But my question is, and so if someone who has not used your software yet and they're, you know, as we're going into like a really lean times, I think for the next 12 to 18 months, we talk about inflation. We talk about all these things where, you know, Amazon sellers, we're looking for more profit. We're looking for net profit. Right. And so let's say someone, someone loads up Ava and, and, and 
goes to AI based and say, hey, I want the demand based pricing set and kind of learn the products. You know, Ava, you know, downloads the reports, gets all the, the historical data and starts learning the, about this product. How long before, you know, the software really finds the price where that's, that's max, you know, that, that maximizes profit? Is it like seven days, 30 days, or does it just, just get, re- just continuously, incrementally get better over time? How, can you explain like that process and how long that takes? Sure. So, I mean, as you know, a new seller, like a, a new EVA user, like connects the, the store. The first thing that we do is like, we take 24 months of revenue, the sales data from Amazon and at least three months of the advertising data, which is what is available on the, on the Amazon side. So the data is already more than enough. Like as soon as like we have that the full 24 months and all the settlements and everything. And typically it takes a couple of days, but normally the user can start using the system after six to eight hours. But in a couple of days, we already have all the data and, and the decisions are, are be, like made by, by Eva right away. And these are the kind of the right decisions anyway. What happens is there is all these other features like, you know, which we mentioned about dynamic discounting or rule-based pricing or taco space or BSR base. And it's very much depending on there are business decisions, right? There are a lot of business decisions. So it takes the user to kind of like learn all the features and, and use it in the right way, well, maybe another three to four weeks. But then you know, the, the, the rest will be done, done by Eva and, and the price will be always optimized based on all the, all the parameters, not just the, the cost, but also the context parameters as well. And so I think that's, and, 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 you know, w- when we started Eva, right, like I mentioned about advertising inventory and the pricing correlations. So Eva is not only about pricing management. Obviously, there is a, at least there is three other ways that Eva can be used to maximize the profits. One is that we talked about a little bit before the show the reimbursements. So we do the recovery at a 13% success rate on 26 different categories. And we believe that we are now the master, we mastered the whole reimbursement thing. And in a, in a, in a great way that we can provide at least a 50% cheaper service than the market, but also it's much better. So that's another way of maximizing the profits. We are able to create replenishment forecasting by, by EVA in a couple of seconds. We are improving that all the time, but that helps to reduce the time to work on this replenishments by 90%, if not under it. And that's also very valuable to, to reduce, you know, like the staffing costs. And uh, you mentioned, for example, long-term storage. We also kind of deliver inventory H reports. We always show what's going on with the long-term storage. It's also my nightmares when I was like, you know, like running our own business, like we, we, we got a, an invoice at some point. And, and there is another thing, Eva is also a 3PL provider. We have more than 120,000 square feet of space in Houston, as well as in, in, in LA, in California. And because we are a 3PL provider, I can tell you easily that The nightmare of the warehouse guys is the storage because storage is expensive and you cannot charge a lot. And the way that Amazon is trying to build this FBA is like, you know, things come in and things get sold, right? Like the expectation is it's not stored that much. Actually, it is stored now a lot because we cannot say that the Amazon FBA is the most efficient and profitable business, right? Probably Amazon is even losing money and compensating it with advertising. But the more people keep like uh, the storage, there is more loss. I mean, the more things, you know, I- at the long term. So that's why we should expect even more fees coming from the Amazon side with that long term storage, because I mean, they don't want to lose money at the end of the day. But right. that's where you lose money <laughs> by keeping the customers' stuff in your warehouse and doing nothing but just paying, I don't know, 20 bucks per pilot or something like that doesn't, doesn't help really. Yeah. And I I think one reason those are especially sneaky is you're not writing a check form every month. 
they take them out of your disbursements. And so it doesn't hurt like it does when you write a check or send a wire. It's really, it's just a really subtle expense of the business that you, if you don't pay attention to it, it can really come and bite you. So one thing you, Ken, you had talked about, or you had asked the question about how long does it take? And I, as we were prepping for this, for this podcast, I, I jotted down some stats from our first 14 days. So we did three brands in six marketplaces. Three of those six marketplaces saw a double digit increase in profitability. Two of the six saw single digit increase in profitability. And one of them saw a decrease, but that was a function of a stock out on one of our hero SKUs. And so we're only 14 days. That was an only a 14 day look. We'll definitely be talking about it on the podcast a lot more, but like to the listeners, if you listen to the Firing Man podcast a lot, you know I'm a I'm a profit margin junkie and and I'm really liking this so far. So Ken, anything else you want to chat about before we jump into the lightning round or fire round? No, I'm good. Hi, any any highlights of the software that we didn't cover that you want to hit on before we go into the fire? We are working a lot on the advertising aspect right now. I mean, that's my I mean, we have a hundred and fifty people team with a, a 35 people just working on developing the software and the primary focus is on advertising because I want to nail it down. I want to make sure that all the sellers have the best advertising you know, kind of approach and in a cost-effective way because whatever we do, we try to make it really cost-effective, nothing like percentage-based software and things like that. And right now, for example, from EVA, you're able to see for any product, what's the inventory and what's the impressions, conversions, and the campaigns related with that product, which means that you can have decisions or you can have inventory-based advertising decisions. Like if the inventory is inbound or it's just, there is a, a, a very low stock, then probably you can reduce your campaign budgets because it doesn't make sense to spend too much money. Just by doing that, we have seen like 5 to 10% increase in ACOS, a lot of because none of this automation software is really inventory aware or most of the VAs or PPC specialists, there is a way of checking it, of course, but it's like too much work, like nobody's doing it. Now, putting it all in the same dashboard, I mean, it becomes super easy just to check all the inventory and at the same time, check the campaigns and do the job. So this is one of the things that we did, but there will be more coming with the, with the advertising stuff as well. Okay. Yeah, that's awesome. And, and I, yeah, do, definitely agree. Like the more, you know, the more modules you can plug in and, and, and be like a cohesive environment monitoring everything, it's more intelligent decisions in the business. So that's really awesome. Well, cool. Hi, are you ready for a fire round? Right. I don't know. What's a fire round? <laughs> You're going to find out. Yeah. All right. Okay. <laughs> we, I'm we've, got a, <laughs> we've got a series of four questions that we ask all of our guests okay. and they're, they're very easy. What is your favorite book? Okay. So that's a nice question. <laughs> I sure took. And we could come back to that one if you if you want to go on. <laughs> okay, like I mean, they're like I, it's very interesting. I never thought about like I'm I'm a I'm a big fan. I read all the books now. You you were like asking me which which son you like the most. That's why I'm thinking <laughs> you know, which of my son. Well, which one is the book like uh, <laughs> the the <laughs> so maybe I can say like the. One of the things that I'm really impressed is the the capital by Thomas Piketty. I think the way that, you know, it's the capital in the 21st century and the way that the money is flowing in the world and the, the rules of the capital, which is almost like an extension of what Marx, the philosopher, like, you know, you know, kind of his novel, which is like very much known as the capital or Das Kapital in, in German. And this is like an, an, a newer version of the, the 21st century version, which I really like in the business, you know, to understand, you know, the importance of money and how the capital works in the world. Okay. Interesting one. What are your hobbies? So I'm, as, you know, as I'm in San Diego, uh, one of the big things that I do is uh, surfing. So I love it very much as well as hiking and spending time with the kids. Very cool. What is one thing that you do not miss about working for the man? Working for the man. Yeah, like corporate America. 
Uh huh. Okay. So I am not missing to have a bus, right? <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's it's better not to have one. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> Awesome. I love that answer. All right. Last one. What do you think sets apart successful e-commerce entrepreneurs from those who give up, fail, or never get started? As you mentioned, the, the ones who are successful sooner or later, I, I believe the ones that have the grit, the, the long-term, the, 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 the resilience and the grit, and if they work hard, I mean, there is absolutely no reason not to be successful. So I think, you know, for an entrepreneur, like they always ask me, I mean, as Eva is also a startup, a SaaS startup, software as a service, when do you think you, it will fail? Well, it will fail at the time I give up, right? So, so it is really important not to give up. It's also important to know when to quit. Excellent answer. Very good. David, over to you to close out the show. Yeah, absolutely. I want to thank you for uh, being a guest on the Firing Demand podcast. We're going to post links to Ava.Guru in the show notes and definitely looking forward to staying on touch. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in to today's Firing the Man podcast. If you like this episode, head on over to firingtheman.com and check out our resource library for exclusive Firing the Man discounts on popular e-commerce subscription services. That is firingtheman.com backslash resource. You can also find a comprehensive library of over 50 books that Ken and I have read in the last few years that have made a meaningful impact on our business. For that, head on over to www.firingtheman.com slash library. Lastly, check us out on social media at Firing the Man and on YouTube at Firing the Man for exclusive content. This is David Schomer and Ken Wilson. We're, We're out. Before you go, we wanted to share a new service that Ken and I have been using called Getita that has made us over $10,000 in Amazon reimbursements. The service requires no monthly subscription and Getita collects a small percentage of the money they recover for you. It takes less than five minutes to set up and works on all Amazon marketplaces. Go to getita.com, G-E-T-I-D-A dot com and enter promo code FTM400. That's FTM for Firing the Man 400 to get your first $400 in reimbursements commission free. How much money does Amazon owe you?